What made you first want to go to Haiti? Uh, my interest in Haiti began when we looked into adopting children. Uh, many years ago, we looked into a program that was from Haiti and found out more about the country, the needs there, how many children were orphans and needing homes, the cost, everything involved in it. Um, it really was what we needed to do, what we felt like God wanted us to do, and that got us more interested in Haiti. And then, of course, after traveling there, I just fell in love with the country, so continued to return. What was your first impression when you first went to Haiti? My first impression of Haiti coming off the plane was just the heat, the smells. Haiti to me is, is like all of your senses coming together. It's what you're looking at, it's what you're smelling, it's what you're hearing, it's chaos. Um, Port-au-Prince is the capital city there and there's just coming off of the, the airplane, um, well you're met by the mariachi band with playing all the instruments and, and just all the noise of a lot of people crammed into one space. Um, and that is, that is what Haiti is in the cities. Not so much in the countryside, but in Port-au-Prince, there's a lot of people. Haiti is, is a country that is the size of New Jersey, um, but there's 8 million people who live in Haiti, and there's close to 400,000 orphans in Haiti. So um, most of those orphans, the majority of them are called economic orphans, meaning they still have parents who are alive. They have not died, or maybe only one of them has died, but the parents cannot afford to take care of the children. Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. So you've got the entire world, the Western half of the world, Haiti is the poorest country that you can find. And um, most, most people there live off of less than $2 a day. It's, it's about $400 to $600 a year is what they live off of, which is incredibly little bit of money compared to what we in the United States are used to. Um, there is education in Haiti, but to go to school you have to pay. Um, to go to school you have to pay for uniforms, you have to pay for your books, and you have to pay for your tuition. It's not a whole lot of money, maybe a hundred dollars for the whole year of school, but to a Haitian family that only makes less than two dollars a day, that is a lot of money. And so the majority of children aren't even able to go to school. So my first impression of Haiti is just one of extreme poverty. Um, I've talked to a lot of people traveling, a lot of doctors, dentists, mission workers who have gone down before and after the earthquake, and they've all have said that in all the travels they've done around the world, this is a different kind of poverty than they've ever, ever seen in any other country. That it's just more desperation. There's, um, there's no sewer system in Haiti. There's no garbage system in Haiti. So even in the capital city, which most capital cities are, are very important to the country and clean and neat, uh, Port-au-Prince is not. Port-au-Prince is very poor. You have heaps of garbage in the streets with uh, large pigs um, going through the garbage just in the middle of the street. You have children everywhere. And in Port-au-Prince, you do have a lot of cars traveling, but you also have a massive amount of people traveling, um, walking right through the cars, uh, selling whatever they have in the baskets on their heads, and children running in and out of cars. Um, some of them on their way to school in their uniforms. Other children will try to beg for money from any car that's passing by or for anyone on the street. After the earthquake, you see more of the beggars that are missing limbs. and. Um, so yeah, it's just extreme poverty. That, that is your first impression when you go to Haiti, but you also see a resilience in the people that you would not see in the U.S. if tragedy had struck us as it had the Haitians. After the earthquake in 2010, what did you do? When we heard about the earthquake in 2010, we had already brought four children home from Haiti at that time, adopted four children, and we had just been in Haiti a few months before that earthquake hit. Um, working in Haiti, had met a little boy in an orphanage. He was really sick with sickle cell. Um, it's a disease, and he was very ill. Could not be adopted. No one wanted to adopt him because of his sickness. And um, so that was our first thought was, what about this little boy that we had met in Haiti who is so sick? What is he going to do now? Because we knew that the 
so many hospitals had been destroyed in the earthquake that hit and also the ones that were left were so overwhelmed with um, injuries of the people from the earthquake that we knew that he would not get proper care. So our immediate response was to try to get him out of the country on humanitarian aid. Um, through several months that fell through and so we just started the full-fledged adoption of Christopher who eventually came home two years later. Um, I did travel to Haiti about a year after the earthquake. I did not go at the time the earthquake hit. We did send financial aid to people we knew who were already on the ground in Haiti called an NGO, a non-government organization, because we knew that they had been there for several years uh, working, and we knew that the money would go directly to the care of the Haitians. How many people lost their lives during the earthquake? When the earthquake hit Haiti near Port-au-Prince, it killed over 300,000 people. Um, there's so many that they don't have an exact count because there was no way to properly bury those who lost their lives in Haiti. Um, there were just big, big mounds where they had to take the bodies to dump them, and um, massive amount of search and rescue going on for weeks after that um, earthquake. Many, many more people lost their homes and were homeless after that. Um, a lot of countries came in to help Haiti, a lot of countries bringing their tarps to make what they called tent cities. That's where the people had to live. Many of them live in tents still today, even though it has been uh, six years since the earthquake. They will um, still be found tent cities in Haiti. Not quite as much as was in the first two years after the earthquake, but um, nobody, you know, they don't have the funds to rebuild their homes that were lost. Uh, many schools were destroyed, many churches were destroyed, many businesses, even the capital of Haiti, the palace. What do you do when you go to Haiti? Well, at first when I traveled to Haiti, it was all about adoption and getting the, to the court and the embassy and getting the kids home. Um, now when I travel to Haiti, I've started taking teams, mission teams down. We have usually take down as many supplies as we can to the orphanages and the schools in Haiti. To ship anything to Haiti, it costs way too much money. And to get it out of customs, it's even more money and they can't afford to do that. So they really solely depend on people coming down there and working and bringing supplies to them. So we do take down um, hundreds of pounds of supplies when we go. We work in the orphanages with the children. We usually do vacation Bible school with them, have some kind of activity where we're hands-on. Um, just playing with the kids means a lot to them. We also go to the schools and clean the schools. We paint the schools. We do building um, repairs on the schools. We have gone up to the um, mountain villages We've done medical clinics where we've taken down medical supplies and medical doctors and nurses come with us so that they travel. People will walk for miles, half a day, to get to a medical clinic to get seen. We also work alongside the Haitians and build houses for them. We've gone to um, a special needs orphanage where people who have disabilities live. Um, in Haiti, if you have a disability, you are not cared for. You're left on the street pretty much to fend for yourself or die. Um, Haiti has a lot of voodoo in their religion, and so they believe that these people are demon-possessed or cursed, and so they don't want anything to do with them, anyone who has a disability. So there's, there's special orphanages that take care of all ages of people who have disabilities. We do like to go visit them, take them supplies, and do something fun with the residents there. So we really have done a lot of different things when we've gone to Haiti. Um, we've raised money to build houses um, for the birth families of our children. We've gone and visited them at their house that we built. We've raised money to send uh, younger siblings to school um, that are younger siblings of our kids that we have adopted so that they have, they have families who are living in Haiti and that we can help to support them in any way. Um, so we do a lot of different things when we go to Haiti. I think the one that is just most impressive is to get other teenagers down there to see what it's like to live in a third world country. It helps to give them perspective on their lives here in the U.S. 
and that there's so much need everywhere, whether it's here in our community or overseas, we could always find a need and we can always do something to help meet it.